The United Nations Security Council met Wednesday after the United States said Wednesday that North Korean troops wearing Russian uniforms and carrying Russian equipment are moving toward Ukraine. Should DPRK soldiers be used in the battlefield, his would mark a further and serious escalation of the conflict, Robert A. Wood, the deputy U.S. ambassador to the UN said. Ukrainian Ambassador Sergei Kislytsia said it was obvious Russians' actions in working militarily with North Korea are a violation of UN sanctions. Even mice and cockroaches no receiving assistance from the fully sanctioned North Korea is a brazen violation of the UN Charter, he said. North Korea's move to tighten its relationship with Russia has triggered alarms across the globe, as leaders worry about how it may expand the war in Ukraine and what Russian military aid will be delivered to Pyongyang in exchange. Russia's ambassador, Vasily Nebenzia called the allegations, bare-faced lies, and said the allegation is being used to distract from, truly significant problems that threaten international peace and security. Muy buenas tardes. Madam President, even mice and cockroaches, but not the Russian ambassador in this chamber, know that none of the countries that provide assistance to Ukraine is under the Security Council sanctions. Yet, in its turn, receiving assistance from, a, from the fully sanctioned North Korea is a brazen violation of the UN Charter. At least seven aircraft carrying military personnel of up to 2,100 soldiers flew from the Eastern Military District to the Russia's border with Ukraine. The number of DPRK soldiers expected to be transferred from the Russia's Primorsky Krai by the end of October 2024 may reach 4,500. It is also expected that in November 2024, DPRK military personnel will begin directly participating in combat operations against Ukraine's defense forces. Should DPRK soldiers be used in the battlefield, this would mark a further and serious escalation of the conflict. The decision to deploy North Korean soldiers would also be an inescapably clear demonstration that Russia is growing more desperate, having already suffered more than a half a million casualties. Russia knows the DPRK threatens peace and security in the region. The Kremlin knows the DPRK's unlawful ballistic missile and nuclear weapons programs undermine the non-proliferation regime that has helped to keep the world safe from nuclear war for decades. Russia knows the DPRK is a pariah with one of the world's worst human rights records. Russia would not turn to the DPRK for a military alliance unless it were desperate and had run out of options. The international community must act to protect Ukraine from Russia and North Korea. A North Korean-backed Russian victory in Ukraine, even a partial one, would dangerously destabilize the world. Появление в этом ряду утверждения переброски на украинский фронт фронт военнослужащих КНДР никого не должно удивить. Все эти случаи объединяет одно: голословное утверждение отсутствия каких-либо маломальских убедительных доказательств. И стремление отвлечь внимание от действительно существенных проблем, представляющих собой угрозу международному миру и безопасности. В этом мы лишний раз убеждаемся сегодня, выслушивая скинания Соединенных Штатов и их сателлитов. Видим в разыгранном сегодня перед нами спектакле единственную задачу – попытаться задним числом оправдать собственное решение отправить войска НАТО для поддержания режима просроченного киевского диктатора на полу. КНДР – наш добрый сосед и близкий партнер, с которым мы развиваем отношения во многих областях. Наше взаимодействие носит транспарентный характер. В его рамках проводятся визиты, заключаются международные договоры, подписываются коммерческие контракты в различных областях двустороннего взаимодействия. Это наше суверенное право. Хотел бы подчеркнуть, что российское взаимодействие с КНДР в военной и в других сферах соответствует международному праву и не нарушает его. Оно не направлено против третьих стран, не представляет никакой угрозы для государств региона или международного сообщества. Мы намерены развивать это сотрудничество и впредь, и никто не может нам это запретить. 
Russia voted for these resolutions. Now, it violates them. This undermines not only international peace and security, but also the Security Council itself. Major General Pat Ryder, the Pentagon Press Secretary, said a relatively small number of North Korean troops are now in the Kursk region, where Russia has struggled to push back a Ukrainian incursion. He declined to provide a more precise number. A couple thousand more troops are heading in that direction, he told reporters Tuesday. North Korea said Tuesday its top diplomat is visiting Russia, in another sign of their deepening relations as rival South Korea and Western nations say the North has sent thousands of troops to support Russia's war in Ukraine. North Korea's official Korean Central News Agency said a delegation led by Foreign Minister Cho Sun Hui departed for Russia on Monday, but didn't specify the purpose of the visit. In a closed-door hearing at South Korea's parliament, the South spy agency said Cho may be involved in high-level discussions on sending additional troops to Russia and negotiating what the North would get in return, according to Lee song Kuyen, a lawmaker who attended the meeting. The announcement of Cho's visit came hours after the Pentagon said North Korea has sent to Russia about 10,000 troops, who are likely to fight against Ukraine within the next several weeks. As of right now, you know, it remains to be seen exactly how the Russians and the North Koreans will employ these forces, Ryder said, adding that he expects the deployment to be discussed by Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, Secretary of State Antony Blinken and their South Korean counterparts when they meet in Washington this week. South Korean and Western leaders have expressed concern that North Korean involvement could help prolong Russia's aggression in Ukraine and that Russia may offer technology in return that could advance the threat posed by North Korea's nuclear weapons and missile program. South Korea's National Intelligence Service told lawmakers it's examining the possibility that some groups of North Korea's military personnel in Russia, including generals or other high-ranking officials, may have already moved to frontline areas. The spy agency said the two sides appear to be struggling to resolve communication issues, although the Russian military is training North Korean troops on Russian military terminology, Lee said. Everyone, just a few things at the top, and I'll get right to your questions. So per the we believe that the DPRK has sent approximately 10,000 soldiers in total to train in eastern Russia and that these troops will probably augment Russian forces near Ukraine over the next several weeks. Uh, a portion of those soldiers have already moved closer to Ukraine towards Russia's Kursk Oblast near the border with Ukraine, uh, approximately a couple thousand, uh, with a smaller number already present in the Kursk region. Uh, we remain concerned that Russia intends to use these soldiers in combat or to support combat operations against Ukrainian forces in Kursk. Uh, we continue to monitor closely and are consulting with our Ukrainian partners as well as other allies and partners. What's the status? You said a small number already in the Kursk. Right. Indications that there's already uh, a small number uh, that are actually in the Kursk Oblast um, with a couple thousand more that are uh, either, you know, almost there or due to arrive imminently. Uh, okay. Again, we'll continue to, the, the rest at this time, uh, of course, um, training out in the east, but fully expect that they'll move in that direction at some point. Can you sort of narrow that? Are you talking dozens, hundreds? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go into specific numbers other than just to say at this point, uh, we assess it's a, a relatively small number. Troops inside Ukraine right now. So we have no information right now to corroborate the reports that there are DPRK um, forces inside Ukraine. This is an indication of uh, the dire situation that Russia finds itself in, in terms of manpower on the front lines. Uh, they have experienced significant casualties uh, in this war, uh, and the fact that they now need to outsource for foreign troops uh, to help support uh, their forces inside uh, Russia uh, indicates that, that there's some serious questions in terms of their ability to continue to sustain uh, their personnel requirements. This is something that we continue to look at in terms of the relationship between Russia and North Korea, 
uh, and what kinds of benefit is North Korea deriving from that relationship. Somewhat related, uh, I think we're at the um, There are millions of Palestinians who rely on that aid, uh, and so implementing this legislation would pose significant risks for those uh, that are dependent on that aid. Uh, and so we will continue to urge the government of Israel to pause implementation of the legislation. The letter that Secretary Austin and Secretary Blinken made quite, quite clear that we're opposed to implementation of that legislation and that there could be consequences under U.S. law and U.S. policy for the implementation. Uh, so again, we'll continue to urge the government of Israel to in, uh, ensure that UNRWA can effectively carry out its mission and facilitate humanitarian assistance. fully aware of the tensions in the Middle East, uh, and we are going to continue to support the defense of Israel uh, from potential attacks by Iran and its proxies, as well as the protection of our forces.